reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Chapter 11, verses 25 to 30. At that time, Jesus said in reply, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For though you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the child like. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord, the Lord Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear sisters and brothers, there are certain unfortunate moments in our life when everything looks going wrong. On the one side, there is a financial crisis. On the other side, there is a strain in the family relationships. And then, the aches and ailments of the body. Everybody seems to misunderstand and misinterpret even the best of our intentions. And we wonder why. We call them the unfortunate moments of our life. In the gospel today, the Lord is telling us, in such moments, a plan of God could be unfolding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A plan of God unfolding in such moments of our life. In such moments, we must be waiting upon God to understand the mystery behind it. Prophet Jeremiah told us, chapter 29, verse 11, I have a plan for you, hidden in my mind, for your prosperity, for your well-being, for your good. To understand this mystery, this plan of God, we must be waiting upon God. And therefore, in the gospel today, Jesus makes a distinction. On the one side, the wise and the learned. On the other side, the child like. What is the difference between these two groups. The wise and the learned, they want to understand everything by the brain. They will be asking questions. Why? And they want a reason for everything. Why did this happen to me? Why did I fail in my business? Why is it 
that everyone is against me. And they will never find a reason. And the reasons they find will be wrong reasons. On the other side, the child like. Who are the child like? The child like approach such problems with the heart. The wise and the learned approach such problems with the brain. The childlike, why childlike? Because the attitude of the children. When a child is in pain, what does the child do? The child would rush to the mother or to the father. And the child would go and hug the mother or the father in tears. The child is not asking for a reason. The child is seeking a refuge and find the refuge in the father, in the mother. And Jesus is saying, this attitude of the children, the attitude of the heart is what is important. Because there is a mystery behind every suffering. A mystery can be understood not by reason, not by brain, but by the heart. The brainy people, the wise and the learned, have tried to explain suffering and pain in different ways. And we know this. When something goes wrong with my life, I blame the other. Someone is hurting me. And that's why there are many daughters-in-law sitting here, very angry with the mothers-in-law. It is that old woman who makes my life miserable. There are many mothers-in-law sitting here, blaming the daughters-in-law. There are husbands and wives blaming each other, parents and children finding fault with each other, blaming others. When we blame the other, what happens? We become angry, we become irritated, and there is hatred and revenge. Blaming others would lead us to anger and hatred. And Jesus would tell us, never be angry, never hate anyone. We are not permitted to hate anyone, to keep anger or revenge against anyone. Therefore, it is a wrong answer. There are others, when things go wrong with their lives, they blame themselves and God. Why God? They would imagine, because of my sin, God is punishing me. A lot of people find this answer credible. Blaming God. Of course because of my sin. But then we question, how can God punish me like this? How can, how could I commit such sin? That leads us not to repentance, no. That leads us to depression. We become sad, we become depressed. And we become angry as well, blaming ourselves, blaming God. One thing is definite. The God whom Jesus came to reveal to us 
is not a god who punishes our sins who destroys us no the god whom jesus came to reveal to us is the god who took the ultimate sacrifice what is the ultimate sacrifice that god took the ultimate sacrifice that god took was to send his own son into the world to make sure that we do not perish john chapter 3 verse 16 god so loved the world the nature of god is being revealed god so loved the world that he sent his only son to make sure that we do not perish those who believe in him do not perish therefore we can't think of god punishing us because of our sin recently there is another thought which is gaining ground in charismatic circles and that is the thought of ancestral curses the curses of the ancestors are falling upon us and god is punishing us because of the sins and curses of our ancestors it is good for us to know this is there is there a curse from ancestors that falls upon us who are baptized st paul tells us romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 verse 1 if you are in christ jesus you are not under a curse shall we say praise the lord for that hallelujah hallelujah if you are in christ jesus you are not under a curse that word in christ jesus is very meaningful the original greek is en christo in christ jesus oh better translated incorporated into christ jesus or become one body with christ jesus when are we incorporated with christ jesus when do we become one body with jesus at the moment of our baptism at the moment of our baptism we become so united with jesus jesus said john chapter 15 John chapter 15 verses 1 onwards I am the vine you are the branches I am connected I am united with Jesus as a branch of Jesus so vitally so intimately connected with Jesus become one body with Jesus and that's why St Paul tells us 1 Corinthians chapter 12 First Corinthians chapter 12 Jesus is the head and we are the body of Jesus members of the body of Jesus so we become incorporated into Christ Jesus at the moment of baptism at that moment we get a new ancestry what is my new ancestry my new ancestry is Jesus I am disconnected from my ancestors and I become one with Jesus in a vital manner so that all the grace of Jesus flows into me and cancels all my sin all the curses coming down to me from ancestors of course in the old testament there is a teaching of ancestral curse in the old testament we read this in the book of exodus that god will punish us for four generations for seven generations but this is the old testament what's the difference between the old and the new testaments the old testament is a preparation for jesus and in the new testament Jesus our savior is come 
Jesus looms large in the New Testament and Jesus corrected and completed and fulfilled many of the teachings of the Old Testament. Remember, remember Jesus said, in the Old you were told, but I tell you, I tell you. In the Old you were told, do not commit adultery, but I tell you, do not even look at a woman, look at a man with lust in your heart. I tell you, Jesus becomes the teacher, the word comes down from the Father who teaches us the right way. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, Jesus said. Jesus looms large in the New Testament. And this teaching of the ancestral curses is one teaching that Jesus corrected in the New Testament, John chapter 9. John chapter 9. The disciples saw a young man born blind in the temple. And the disciples asked Jesus, Master, why is this man born blind? Because of his sin or the sins of his ancestors? The question is about whether this particular man born blind because of a punishment for his own sins or because of the ancestral curses. You know what Jesus said? Neither because of his sins nor because of the sins of his ancestors but for the works of God to be manifested in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus very clearly rejects any teaching of the ancestral curses. You know, someone went for a retreat in a center and in that center all the time it was a talk about ancestral curses. This man was a drunkard and he went for the retreat to change that habit. Now he came to know I became a drunkard because of the ancestral curse coming down to me. So how can I change I'm lost. I'm determined to be lost. That sort of thought destroyed him completely. My dear sisters and brothers, Christianity is the good news. And Jesus said, my works are works of salvation. My works are to be revealed. Therefore, let us not slip into despair and think of any such wrong teachings that could disturb us and destroy us. Therefore, the whole talk of the ancestral curse is to be rejected. The church teaches us in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the official teaching of the church, the church teaches us the waters of baptism wash away all the curses and all the sins coming down to us from our ancestors. And therefore, we shall never, we shall never slip into despair and say, what can I do? The sins of and curses of ancestors have fallen upon me. All these are to be rejected. And now, there has become childlike. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. When a child is in distress, a child is in pain, the child rushes to the mother with that pain, with that burden. Same way, the Lord wants us to do this. Take up your cross and follow me. When there is a cross on your shoulders, here I am inviting you, come to me, you who are tired, you who are burdened, I will, I will give you rest, I will comfort you. And my dear sisters and brothers, this invitation is for every one of us. We must take up our cross and follow Jesus and find our salvation, our healing in Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And therefore, Jesus is revealing to us suffering is a mystery. 
and why a mystery because suffering is connected with jesus every pain in my body every suffering that we that comes down to us is connected with jesus that's what prophet isaiah said isaiah speaking about the savior he said all things all our sin all our pain is handed over by god to jesus the savior and that's a cross that's a cross he bore what was the weight of that cross that jesus carried the weight of that cross was the weight of the sin and pain of the human kind of you and me therefore my pain my sin belongs to jesus i need to give it to him i need to give it to him said peter said when sufferings come your way rejoice this is the teaching in the new testament rejoice st paul speaks about it st james speaks about it count it all joy when sufferings come your way in the letter of st james chapter 1 verse 2 count it all joy when sufferings come your way and st paul speaks about it all the time uh, colossians 1:24 colossians i rejoice in my sufferings suffering is not a cause of despair suffering is not a cause of distress when i give it all in the hands of jesus i am able to rejoice i find joy the joy of the lord descending into me and therefore um, st peter tells us rejoice when sufferings come your way why because st peter tells us my pain is a share is a share given to us given to me in the cross of jesus you are bearing you are given our share in the cross of jesus every pain that we have it could be a mental distress it could be a bodily pain every pain we suffer is a share is a share in the cross of jesus why a share why a share because my pain belongs to jesus it is what the heavenly father has entrusted to jesus therefore when i am suffering a pain in my hand say a terrible pain in my hand why why should i think of that pain this pain in my hand is a share is a share i am given in the terrible pain and agony that jesus suffered when nail was driven into the hand of jesus when there's a pain in my body i must place myself at the pillar at which jesus was flogged a little share of that pain is being given to me when i am misunderstood what should i think of it i must place myself in praetorium a little share a little share in that terrible agony of jesus when jesus was condemned to be crucified and a sword pierced his heart that pain a share of it is being given to me every pain is connected with jesus that's why a pain is a mystery a pain is a mystery every distress of the mind is a mystery it is connected with jesus mysteriously connected with jesus therefore when i am in pain a physical pain or mental distress i must consider myself fortunate fortunate because i am given a share in the cross of jesus hallelujah 
Hallelujah. My dear sisters and brothers, this is something so beautiful to understand. After the cross of Jesus, every cross falling upon us is connected with the cross of Jesus. And I need, I need consciously to find this, that connection, that mysterious connection with Jesus. And then with my cross, as Jesus invited us, we will follow Jesus. Come to me. All the time that invitation, come to me. You who are burdened, you who are tired, come to me. Come to me. You who are bearing a cross, come after me. This invitation of Jesus, because my cross is connected and united with the cross of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus.